Good morning from Yummy Bee TV. Wishing you all well today. Sending splendid love to you all once again on another glorious morning coming from down here and long may it continue now. Fresh from going out last night, I'd like to thank some of you that were in the building with me and um, as well as the, my three that are always around me when I'm up that side of town now. Um, I forgot your name, big man, the one that was talking about the Jigsaw murder, um, Stephen Marshall. I know I'm not gonna, I'm gonna bring that to the table soon, but I've got to work out how I'm gonna do that subject because it's a man that I met a couple of times during that life as well. And you tall man as well, with your little baby face, this is big up to you as well, man. It was a nice, jovial, happy spirit. Sometimes I feel like I'm a little child again, you know, it's fucking strange all these all these changes that are coming to me thick and fast since I've you know, I've been um, in a good in a good place in recent in recent weeks, but I won't be doing that laughing again. It's too overwhelming. Um, I think I make it. I say all the wrong things anyway. You see what well, life when you, you haven't lived no normal life. You see what it does. Um, you don't know the the significance of what you're saying, Yami. You are. You just a little. You see, up, some of you've been through that love, and it can tear you apart, and can take up your whole day and whatever. And I don't even. I'm the, for that feeling that I had a week and a half ago, whatever that I was telling you about. I was thinking it's too. It's too far fetched, really. It's not really. But I suppose there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. There've been many ladies saying, "Yeah, I was. I I was in love with you, Yami, and you didn't. You know that it, 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 you didn't reciprocate." It and all of that, so we spot swings and roundabouts, don't it? And then you get your turn when it's all <laughs> well, you would have won. I felt feel like I was being bullied to be honest, right? But listen, we're going live this evening, all right? We're gonna go live and we're gonna discuss and we are gonna dissect it. And I will be going in, we will be going in, um, in the evening session tonight. As many of you in the area, it's gonna be one of those great lives, right? Especially with me being switched on. Come with some names as well with reputations that I might have forgotten about. And you know, I'll answer it straight away who lived up to the billing. But you know, that old saying of when, you know, growing up every day, we'll say, yeah, but reputation, there'll always be someone who's gonna come and test the water with you, right? What I, I'm dissecting it the other day. What it actually means is uh, when you've got a big name and reputation for whatever reasons during that shit life that we, we talk so freely about on Yami B TV, is that a man with no name um, all of a sudden gets a big reputation off you because he wasn't known. Maybe some don't even want to be known anyway, but they can see quite through. Some men can see through um, certain reputations and it doesn't really, they don't overruled or phased by it at all. But what it means is, is that forever and a day, when you've got these big reputations, the man that with no name is going to always be attached to your reputation, which now again, his name comes up. So therefore, he's got a kind of reputation, but he becomes the man that you came unstuck by. Do you see what I mean? So it swings in roundabouts. And who lived up to the billion and how certain men carried themselves and the way that some men don't have to get involved in violence or some of those big names. And they're not known for having a row, but did they manage and cope um, and not get really tested? We know that some men did get tested, even when Palmer got robbed for that thing in Coldenly. I remember I forgot to tell you that one of those that took part in that, remember there was a lot of contraband, was, loads of stuff was coming in and they just one day, they went for a man, he couldn't do nothing. No, I wasn't there. But um, he, he got one of them, because he could, people like Palmer, rest in peace, John, he, 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 Palmer could get um, your name anyway. Even if he didn't know who you was at the time that was doing that, who done that, who went in on him and, you know, robbed him and belittled him and disrespected him. When he leaves and things, he's got the power. I had the power to just bring someone. Yeah, what was that guy's name? The one with this bit in it. They'll tell him his name. He'll make a phone call. And one of them went to another jail and got touched. And, but the thing with that kind of thing is you, when it happens to you, when someone runs up on you and commits an act of violence, without, you know, you haven't got no trouble in that jail whatsoever. It just comes completely random where it's a hit, really. And you've got to lie down there and think, well, was it that one or was it this one? It depends how many things you've accumulated over a lifetime, right? So we will be discussing reputations deeply today, right? Now, in all forms, right, and I'll give it to you straight. Um, the Long Larton thing the other day, the documentary, we also talk about, right, do, does, um, a couple of people on that show, the documentary, and, you know, the, entitled to their opinions and that kind of stuff. We dissect that as well with, do these rule in the case? Do fist rule 
in the category A's? Uncle Yami says, no, they don't. They play a part in, because you can have a row. That means, because you're known for having a row. So somebody who might not be as good as you, but there are men who might be as good as you, you would want to, your, your way is, yeah, I can have a row and I'm gonna win that way. I always believed that it's bravery that gets you through and the bottle to go and commit the act because it's not everything that's gonna revolve around a fist fight. And many men won't do it that way. So fists do rule, I suppose in the olden days, yeah, you can knock a man. But it's not that many men that like being knocked on the floor um, by another man, especially when they didn't want to fight or anything like that, if you get what I mean. And we want to go and pick up weapons to go and get the job done. Don't believe, um, especially in this stone age, we'll talk about that later. Do the fist rule um, inside there? I say no. They play a what? They play a part in the jungle, in the war zone. Um, and you can get out of trouble and you can get your own way because you can deliver a couple of things quickly and blah, blah, blah. But nah, there's no rules. And, and, and fist alone will not be enough. But we discussed that tonight as well. Also, a break, breakdown on the, I suppose on a, a more of an emotional side of stuff, right? A more side of emotional stuff. A couple of men rang me recent times, right? In the last week or so. And they said, yeah, and I said, what? I said, what, brother? I've known these guys, you know, some of them we talked about, we know about. But they said, I said, what's up, brother? And they said to me that they'd be, they woke up one day and they were just in floods of tears, breakdown, in late life. They said they were just crying uncontrollably. I know what they mean, because it happened to me. What it means is, is that you, it's realization that you did everything you did for nothing. And that life you spent all those years away without knowing, knowing now that there were so many different ways to do things outside without being a criminal, you know what I mean? And, and not being, you know, taken in by a life that's been grossly unkind to everyone. And this is what I say about invincibles, untouchables. We can even discuss that tonight too. But the realization that you lived a kind of fake existence or trying to be and fit in and a sense of belonging and you lived on your row and that, because when that goes, takes away from you, ultimately, you were known for being able to have a fight. This is why I talk about it the way that I do, but when that disappears, what? how do you get your self-esteem and your ego then for the rest of who you really are? This is what you can't live based on um, perception of, you know, you, you're sending out to living in a certain way for so long. And then when, that is, you know, you, you find out in the end that, that's all you that's all you thought of yourself when really there was many other parts to you as well without having to rely on being a hard man or a bad man and all that so yeah my heart goes out to some of you there as well i know what that means that crying that thing because you, you but you just all you got to do is just be glad that you're here to play a, a little bit more part in later life that's the way that i do it and i wake up happy especially in the moment you know why but you know what i mean it's gone there's nothing you could do. We failed it, I'm afraid. We all lost, whether you like it or not. We touched on those invincibles and those untouchables. Um, at first, me believing that certain people couldn't get touched and all that, again, with those reputations. Uncle Yummy points clearly to the evidence that in the end, everybody got it. Um, sending special love to you all. I'll see you all later on. Loads of love.